Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, on this very cold and rainy day, uh, yet another rainy day, it's been raining just about all week, uh, we are going to be talking about whether or not it is beneficial to have a cross roller slider rotors, or if you just want to go with your standard ones, you know, save some money. So, uh, what are the benefits? Is it a scam? Is it a, why do race cars have that? Is it just because they look cool? Well, there's some reasons behind that, and today we're going to go into those. So, to help me out, because I know you can see mine, but um, I also have got this guy here to help us out. Um, and this guy is kind of going to be like our diagram. Um, as you can see, this guy is slotted and drilled. And also ventilated with the veins in here. Right? But what does all this stuff actually do? Well, first, in order to understand what all this does, you have to understand how heat travels, and really the three different types of heat transfer, which is being annoying. I'm going to go ahead and set that down. Um, that occur. Right? So we've got um, conduction, convection, and radiation. Now, those are our three main types of heat transfer. Um, and I'll basically go into each briefly. So, first, of course, we're going to talk about conduction. So say you have two surfaces uh, and you really actually kind of do got your brake pad and you got your brake rotor uh, we'll just use those as examples um, say when you brake your pad touches your rotor if your pad is hotter than your rotor that heat is going to be transferred from the highest temperature area to the lowest temperature area and that is going to be conduction it's going to conduct that heat to a different surface um, so that's kind of the basis of conduction. You can also um, say if you touch your hot iron, um, you're ironing your clothes and you touch the iron to the clothes, it's going to get the clothes hot because it, uh, the heat is traveling from the high temperature iron to the low temperature clothes, and it's going to heat that up. So um, just in general, we've found heat will always travel from the highest temperature area to the lowest temperature area. Okay, so that's uh, conduction. Convection, um, primarily used in cooling. It can be used in heating, but it's generally not used in heating in large amounts, except with convection ovens. That's pretty basic. But um, is where air moves over something and transfers or takes away heat from that thing. For example, your brakes. Uh, this is going to get all rusty sitting out, dude. Um, if your brakes, um, you have air flowing over your brakes, right? It flows through your wheel well and goes over your rotor, especially if you have a pretty decently designed system. And then you have uh, radiation. Now radiation is, say you have a stove, and you turn it on, and you got your hot burner, and you put your hand over it, not on it, because that's stupid, you put your hand over it, you can feel that heat rising up, that's just radiating off, right? Um, heat generally travels up, warm air travels up, cold air travels down, um, it's basic physics, and um, that radiation, uh, heat actually travels out from that object through the air in um, and infrared radiation. So that's really the three basic forms of um, heat transfer. But now that we've talked about those, um, all three of those are actually used in braking. A lot of people actually don't think about the radiation side of braking, but studies have shown that under high performance, high stress braking situations, up to 45% of peak energy is uh, transferred through radiation. So. Um, it's very important that we deal with those forces at play um, in order to boost our braking performance and uh, make our vehicles safer, should you choose to do so. So, the basics of why we add these things to our rotors is not because they look cool, um, as true as it is, uh, it does look pretty cool, and that's at least 50% of the reason that I did it. Um, it can also improve braking distance and braking performance. Spoilers, I know I pretty much just summed up the whole video in that one sentence, but how, right? We don't want to know the how, we want to know the why. So, cut to the chase. We have these slots. These slots uh, serve a very fine purpose. Um, when your pad is here, and this is spinning, and then your pad's traveling along the surface of this this, this disc, um, it can have some grit, it can have some small debris, but it can also have some gas that gets trapped in between your pad and the rotor, and it can be at the detriment of the braking ability. So these slots have to scrape off that fine debris, and it actually scrapes off a microscopic layer of the brake pad. And microscopic, mind you, uh, it does make it wear a little bit quicker, but it's nothing insane like you're changing your pads every 2,000 miles or anything like that. 
I have had these a long time. I have been very hard on them, and I still have about 75% of the pad left. Uh, but what it does is it scrapes a very microscopic layer off. It scrapes any dirt and debris out, and it also helps to trap the gas in the slot, and then that slot pushes the gas out, uh, and it helps clear the way in between your pad and your rotor, and it helps break the points. Um, but you don't see as high of a performance increase with the slots as you do with the holes. You might ask yourself, what are all these little holes for? Surely that's got to affect your distance. Like, it's not as much surface area to grab, right? Well, actually, what it does is it improves cooling. Because in here, we have our veins, is what they call them, and it looks like a little fan in here. And as it spins, it pulls air, or well, it technically pushes because it goes this way. It pushes air out from the inside of your rotor to the outside edge of your rotor. And this goes hand in hand with the convection that we talked about because it pulls new air through and that air can help to cool your brake rotor. Um, the little holes help air travel through these veins more efficiently and studies have shown that it can cool your temperatures up to 180 degrees uh, in certain situations. So the holes help to ventilate with the convection and the slots help to clean for that contact, for that friction. So these are the basics of why you want these things on your brake rotors. Now you might say to yourself, but I mean, there's got to be less less surface area for the thing to grab, and surely these holes is in a big um, structural weakness. Well, when you do get sauce and holes, you can have issues with thermal cracking. Now, I have not had any issues with these, and I have worked these very hard. Um, you might have issues with thermal cracking if you were, say, what is that? Oh, I don't even want to know what that is. Oh my god. What is this, guys? What is that? That is gross. Get off. Ugh. What was I talking about? Okay. Oh, thermal cracking. Um, maybe if you work these really hard, they might. I haven't had any issues. If you're getting them from a really good reputable source and you're getting really good, um, really good metal, you know, good metals, not some weird owl I made of a bunch of cheap soft metal, but like really good stuff. Uh, I, I, you probably wouldn't have any issues. I haven't had any issues. The only issue I've had is uh, uneven wearing on one of the pads. So there's a really hard piece of debris or something in there and it's causing a groove to form around my rotor. So the basic summary of these guys versus your standard smooth is not just because these look cooler, but also because these are cooler, more efficient, and they do help to scrape that pad clean and make sure there's nothing preventing your friction from and since your brake pads and cool braking system in general works better at lower temperatures, obviously this can help you achieve a noticeable improvement on your braking performance. However, now it's time to add a disclaimer and say the rotors really are not a big determining factor in how fast you can stop. Um, really, what you want to go for is your tires. So if you get a softer compound, you have more grip wheels aren't going to want to lock, right? Because this, if it loses grip, your wheel's going to lock, and then you're not going to be stopping very fast at all, right? So you want to make sure you have good tires. These are Goodyear Eagle LS2s, very good tires. Um, with this braking setup, I am hitting my limit of how fast I can brake. I'm actually not able to use these for their full potential because these tires just won't hold the road to stop them. Jesus Christ, slow down, fuck it all! Oh, 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 you didn't see what I saw. That guy was backing out of his driveway. He almost got T-bone, dude. Jesus. On the wet road, dude. Um, the, what was I again? See, I, this is a problem with filming out here, dude. He was in a Mercedes, too. He probably thought he could go around, but... Anyway. Ah, I'm dying. Okay, I'm going to sum this up real quick, guys. Um, <laughs> the tires. I already talked about these. Right. Come on, tires, yes. Okay, all right. Uh, pads, <laughs> that's what I was trying to talk about. Now, your brake pads can be made up of a lot of different things. You can have ceramic, you can have some metallic, and different ones have different benefits, which I will get into in a different video. Um, I'm running semi-metallic. Spoilers, those are 
pretty much going to be one of your better uh, stopping distance related pads. They're louder, they make more dust, but they stop a heck of a lot quicker. And they can handle a little bit higher temperatures. They're a good conductor of heat, which means that, um, again, conduction is going to conduct that heat evenly. And it's not going to sit in the pad and cause problems that way. Um, I'm running so I'm metallic. That's why my rims look like crap. That is brake dust, okay? Off of one spoke. I just wiped it, and that is brake dust, okay? Uh, now I'm gonna wipe it over my pants and make my pants look like I was rolling around in the mud. Um, so if you don't mind a little bit of excess noise, a little bit of excess dust, um, a lot of excess dust, um, they will reward you with better stopping times and better temperature management, especially in high performance driving situations. I did get dark rims for this reason because it hides it a lot better. Um, however, if you do look at this spoke, you can see the gloss and the shine. Um, these do have to be washed often. And I'm looking at getting a ceramic coated so that way brake dust just kind of slides off because um, as the ceramic coating has a hydrophobic and I don't know what thermophobic officially is. Uh, brake dust will basically you can just wash it off without having a scrub. So I'm looking at maybe getting the ceramic coated. Um, it would be a pretty good upgrade. But that's a topic for another video. Um, so yes, basically these are worth the money. I would recommend getting them. Um, I'm not really going to recommend a specific brand. I mean, if you find one that you think is cool, I mean, go ahead and go with it. Uh, I can tell you what mine are, but as you can see, mine have problems with rusting, and they're not supposed to do that. At least they said on the website that they have superior corrosion resistance, and they can withstand hours and hours and hours of salt spray. As you can see, I haven't, I have not driven through any salt water, and I haven't driven through any rain in a long time. And, and, and these guys have completely basically rusted, and they're dry. So um, anyway, I'm not going to go into that. You can find on my channel all the videos that I've talked about them. Uh, but these are R1 concepts. Um, that's what this guy is. This guy's an E-Line, and this guy's an R uh, Carbon GMA. This one's better. This one's the in-between. The only reason I have these is because they sent me these for free, uh, because these had rust problems. So I'm semi-happy with them, semi-not, because they did kind of false advertise. But see, now I'm getting ahead of myself. If you liked the video, don't forget to like, comment, um, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more helpful info on uh, what is beneficial for your vehicle and what's just a scam. Um, we got coming up um, some light bars for the LED light bars for the hood. We're going to do a rally style um, hood light bar setup. Uh, those are supposed to be coming in tomorrow, so I probably have a video of that up sometime within the next week or so uh, of the unboxing, and then I'll install them when I can. Um, as a matter of fact, here's what. Come on, come in, come in, let me show you something. Okay, guys, I got a plastic bag over you. I don't know what you can see and what you can't. But check this out. Look at that! In case you see that, that's awesome, isn't it? Yes, so that's the reason why videos will maybe be delayed on the channel. Um, but as soon as I can get that fixed, we'll get those light bars on.